Does the SAT measure how intelligent you are? Honestly, I don't think so. I tell all of my students this is more about learning to play the game. And it all starts with general test taking strategies, strategies that you can use on any test you take in school, on the SAT or the ACT. So the first thing that I teach my students right away are guessing strategies. You will get stuck at some points during the test. You're human. It would be really weird if you knew every single answer to every single question. So if you're a person that runs out of time, then the best guessing strategy you can use is called Christmas tree. Why it's called Christmas tree, I'm not really sure. I think it has to do with stringing lights uh, straight down a tree, I don't know. But all this entails is picking a letter and sticking with it all the way down your bubble sheet. If you have 10 questions left and there's only a minute remaining, this is the best way to ensure that you can pick up extra points. If you stick with a letter, it's guaranteed to come up as the answer a few times. So my suggestion would be to choose the letter D and stick with it. I find that D tends to be the answer more often towards the end of a section because the test designers know it's going to take you longer to get to that answer choice. Now, the next guessing strategy is if you're on a standalone question. So you're not running out of time, but you're in the middle of the section and maybe you're stuck on like number 14. This strategy is called majority rules because you're taking the answer choices and assessing their characteristics and narrowing it down to the one that has the most in common with the other answer choices. So for example, on this math problem that I actually had on one of the SATs I took, here were the answer choices. Now, when you look at these answer choices, you'll notice some have radicals and one does not. Since that one is an oddball, you cross that off first. Then you can move on to look at the structure and you see two radicals are subtracting one. One of them is only a fraction, so you'll cross off the one that's a fraction, that's the oddball. Now when you look at all the answer choices, you'll notice that they have twos in them and there's only one that has a three in it, so you would cross off the one with a three in it and you land on your answer radical two minus one. That was actually the answer on one of the SAT tests that I took. Okay, now moving on to some other strategies aside from guessing strategies. Leaving a trail is huge. Leave a trail by crossing off answer choices that you've eliminated. This will help you easily see what is left. And if you have to go back to the question later on, then you'll already know what you've eliminated and you won't have to start from scratch. Next, we have the one minute rule. This is a time test, guys, so you have to really manage your time wisely. It's not smart to stick on a question for too long. And that's because there are other questions further down in the section that might be easy for you to answer. So you wanna give yourself a chance to pick up as many points as you possibly can. I don't know if you ever saw the Disney movie Cinderella, but I liken it to the character Gus Gus. Gus Gus is a cute chubby mouse, and he wants to gather as many corn kernels as possible before the cat Lucifer catches him. So you're like Gus Gus, you're picking up as many kernels as you can, and if you stick on one question too long, then that's really not your kernel. You, you can move on to other questions and get more points. So I would say stick to the one minute rule, which means if you feel like you've been on a question for a minute or more, then it's time to move on. So dot the question to come back to, and then go on to the other questions, and with your extra time at the end, then you can revisit the question. What's nice about doing that too is if you've hit a wall where you're not really sure what to do and you're stuck, when you go back, you'll see it differently possibly. You know, it's like you have a new set of glasses on or new lenses on, and you also don't have the pressure of time anymore. You're just using your extra time. So you might see something you didn't see before, and it'll give you a better chance of picking up the point if you put it down for a while and come back to it. 
So I really work with my students on thinking about their thinking as they work through a test. And you should be doing this on all sections of the SAT. For instance, sometimes I work with students who rush because they're so worried about the time. So, you know, if they're rushing through a problem, for them to be able to take a step back and say, oh, wow, I'm rushing on this. I'm going way too fast. I need to slow down. That's huge. It'll help prevent them from making careless mistakes. They're really like analyzing their thought process. Another big one for metacognition is recognizing your anxiety levels. Sometimes, you know, you might start freaking out if you don't know the answer to a question. So recognizing that you're doing that and talking yourself off the ledge. This is okay. It's only one point. I can come back to it later. This is normal to feel this way. I knew I was going to get stuck on some problems. I'm just going to doubt it. These are things that can help you really um, just stay on track and not psych yourself out. So picture yourself like uh, floating above yourself while you're in the test and watching yourself take the test. If you get to know yourself as a test taker and can really monitor how you're taking the test, it's gonna help you get the best score you possibly can. All right, so that's it for the general test taking strategies. Please apply these on each section of the test and I'll see you soon.